Hey guys, Ken here from the Retro Toys Capades channel in Malaysia. You know, I always find it interesting, uh, every time I come on the channel, I always make it a point to mention that I'm from Malaysia because this is a Malaysian-based channel. However, according to the recent audience stats released by YouTube for my channel, uh, I found out that close to 70% of my audience base over the last year is in fact from the United States. So hey, look, wherever you are in the world, I thank you for joining me. Today I'm checking out the images released online a couple of days ago of the new Masterverse Deluxe King Grayskull figure. As I understand it, this is supposed to be a Target exclusive figure and is up for pre-order right now at the Target website for the price of US $29.99. Now, I will say that King Grayskull is not a character that I'm explicitly familiar with as there was no sign of him in action figure format at least within the original 1980s line of figures from Mattel. But there was a version of him that turned up in the classic series. The most distinctive feature I think of the classics action figure is that King Grayskull wasn't a black guy. And uh, in fact, he kind of looks like the spiritual dad to him and himself here. Now, the story behind King Grayskull is that he's the original creator and wielder of the Power Sword. In the recent Revelation cartoon series, the heroes find him in the Eternian heaven known as Pre-Eternia, and he's voiced by Dennis Haysbert, who I most fondly remember from his role as the president in 24. You guys remember 24, right? Dennis Haysbert rocked it on seasons 1 to 4, and yo, you know what? What a great show that was. Okay, what a great freaking show 24 was. I sure do hope that it comes back on TV at some point. Fox, make it happen, guys. Come on. The Masterverse King Grey Skull figure comes in deluxe packaging. And you know what? Somehow, the more I look at these deluxe sets, I can't help but feel that there's just so much here that could just be repackaged and placed within a standard Masterverse package without the inflated pricing. I think when Masterverse rolled out its first exclusive deluxe, which was the Faker set, it sort of did look like there was a lot of wasted space in there already. But at the same time, you saw how they were giving you a lot of options with the figure. Okay, you had the alternate armor, a variety of accessories, and three different hits. So far, I'm pretty sure that I think the Faker set is the only set to date that's giving you three different hits. But as time went on, and with what we've been seeing recently with the Triclops and Trapjaw Masterverse Deluxe sets, it seems like a lot of the accessories here are pretty much unnecessary, or maybe they could just be shoved into a standard non-deluxe package. That's definitely the case here with King Grayskull. He looks large in the box, but that's mainly because of the way that he's posed in there, like all spread out and ready in a battle stance. Now, it can be argued that the accessories that you see here, such as the alternate hands, the two giant power swords, the shield, all that stuff could be packed in a smaller box. As for the alternate hits, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's a deluxe set because there's an alternate hit included. We've seen standard package stuff such as Stinkor and Evelyn all come with extra hits, so we know that's possible, right? Look, let me know in the comments if you guys prefer the larger packages or if it doesn't make any difference. Thing is, I don't throw out the boxes. I think I mentioned that before and it would be great if the boxes were in fact smaller, okay? Unless there was a really good reason for them not to be. One of the best things about having the larger boxes though is the larger space devoted to the artwork. And the portrait here of King Grayskull that comes with the package is just stunning. The artwork here is of course from Ilmon O'Donoghue who along with Axel Jimenez and Francisco Edhart are producing some of the absolute best modern day Masters of the Universe artwork. Now Ilmon has stopped by the channel previously to drop a comment on one of our earlier videos and I really appreciate that and I look forward to seeing everything else that he's got in store for the world of Motu. Now looking at the images of the figure itself, I will say that King Grayskull is one very impressive and imposing looking toy. I really do like the design of the character, the face sculpts both look fantastic, the swords look very nice, the colors, the cape, the shield, everything just rocks. As far as medieval fantasy action figures go, I think that this thing just looks fucking amazing. All right, it's one of those things that commands your attention. If it's in the room and somebody sees it, the person's just going to go like, whoa, 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 what the hell is that supposed to be? It just looks sick, man. Totally sick. Having said all that, I probably will not be getting this particular figure for my collection. Now, the reason for that being that, you know, as amazing as I think this thing looks, I don't feel that there's any immediate urgency for me to own it. 
the character is stunning, as I said, from a visual standpoint. But in terms of his actual screen time on the show, or how much we even know about him, I would say that we don't really know all that much. You know, most casual He-Man fans probably have never even heard of King Grayskull to begin with, even from his time as a classics action figure. Now, I have said before that I am a fan of Masterverse and what they're doing with this line. Series 1 was good, but not really that great. But since then, they've really been pushing the quality and character selections, and I've been pretty much completely on board. However, for me personally, I have been limiting my actual purchases to the characters that I feel are vintage Moto inspired or that closely resemble their original action figures from the 80s. So, King Grayskull, either the classics version of him or this new version here from Revelation, he doesn't fit the bill at all okay, because he just wasn't from that vintage line that I remember. And, you know, I didn't even want to get characters like Skelligod. I thought that he was overpriced to begin with. And in fact, the Skelligod figure was pretty clumsy and he doesn't even stand up too great. I thought that it was going to be a big deal on the show. It turns out he was just, I don't know, man. <laughs> I mean, season two was really good. But have you ever heard people talking much about Skelligod since then? Even the images that we saw of the upcoming Barbarian, Skeletor and Viking He-Man. Uh, yeah, those images have been circulating online for a couple of weeks now, maybe about two months. You guys have seen them, right? Those figures look okay. They look pretty good, actually. But um, they're, they're not really based on any kind of source material that I'm familiar with. Or, you know, even if they were, uh, I really have not heard of them, right? So, you know, I kind of feel the same way with them as I do with King Grayskull here. Uh, all these figures look interesting, uh, but I don't feel like I need to get them ASAP okay, because they kind of seem removed from the core group of vintage inspired figures that I want for my collection. So ultimately, these guys are all nice to look at, but maybe staring at a photo of them is enough for now. But as always, these are just my own personal opinions and I might change my mind when this thing finally starts showing up and you know, I've got him in my hands. You know, I may decide to grab him anyway. But let me know what you guys think about the images of this Masterverse Deluxe King Grayskull. As always, I look forward to your feedback and comments and I'll catch all of you guys again soon with more new content on the channel. Thank you. Take care out there.